Okay, guys, it's Calvin from the Cartoon Company in New Zealand. I do a heap of 1UZ conversions and wiring, and at the moment, we're setting up a link uh, onto a Gen 1, Gen 2 engine, non VVTI engine. And we're going to talk about the idle speed control and aftermarket computers. Now, the factory stepper is a great unit, and they work really well. Uh, they need to be serviced properly and looked after. I've shown videos on how to service both the screw type and the roll pin type. And if they are clean and working properly, they do work very, very well. One issue that they have is they take up a lot of outputs from your computer for your, for your aftermarket ECU. Ideally, I like them to reset when you turn the key off, like they do on a factory computer. And so that takes up an extra output. So you have four outputs for the stepper itself and another output for holding the ECU power. This particular ECU that arrived, it was set up to turn, to reset the stepper on key on. And then it didn't have a lockout to allow that to actually go through the cycle. So you could actually turn the key on, the stepper starts its reset, you'd hit the go, you'd hit the, the start, the stepper would still be resetting, it wouldn't know where it is, it'd lose track and it would idle like crap. And I could see that happening. You could see it in the way the computer was set up, and that would have been giving the customer grief with this car. It would have been shit. No, it would have been quite poor in its idle and very inconsistent. I wanted to use some other outputs for oil pressure, um, possibly a check engine light, so I've decided to swap to a two-wire idle speed control. It's a, it's a solenoid. We should try to call these things a proper name, but we also know that sometimes we'll call that one a stepper motor and we'll call this one a stepper motor, but it's actually a solenoid. Default, it just shuts. So if it isn't powered up, it will just close. Um, so no, no air going through it. With the aftermarket ECUs, you also often set a base idle a little bit differently. So what you might do is you might drop that um, throttle stop off and bring the idle up to say 700 when it was warm and then use the stepper to do the last 100, 150 above that. I'm not gonna detail that on this particular video. I'm just gonna let you know that that is a way of doing it. We'll have a look at the stepper. I'm gonna calibrate set up the ECU and put some base numbers into it and give that a test. It's pretty similar in the test function to the likes of your um, your coils or injectors, but a little bit different again. So let's get into this and we'll see what we can do. So there's our ECU, it's a, a G4 Extreme. Wiring loom, individual coils, Sequential injection. And this is the stepper, two wire stepper that set up. Little billet block, forward unit, and I haven't plugged it in. So one of these wires is a 12 volt, and one of them is a earth, a PWM, pulse width modulated earth from the ECU. So I'm going to start and I'm going to go in, connect to the ECU. It's come up green over here. So we're connected in. We don't worry about the errors. I've got the throttle position sensor disconnected. For idle speed to work, you do need the throttle position sensor fitted and calibrated correctly. I've done another video on that earlier. So just to note, you do need to have that correct. And some of the settings from the TPS, if it's a little bit fluffy, the signal is a little bit fluffy or it doesn't rest down properly, can affect your idle. So if you're having idle problems, check your TPS settings as well. Okay, so we're going into the auxiliary outputs. We've got fuel pump, fan and taco. Down here we've got stepper, which it was on stepper. I'm going to turn that off. And I can supply drawings for the factory stepper if you'd like. I worked them out many years ago. We're just going to get rid of all of those. Okay. 
And I believe I've wired it to number six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that in. Yep, that's good. And I'm going to test PWM. Change it to 150. That's good to me. One twenty, that's all good. Okay, we're good. Off. Ooh. So we can hear that buzzing away. We'll do that again. Here is it buzzing. It's making quite a noise. Right. So I'm going to put that on to ISC solenoid. So the, the setting I'm going to use, I'm going to use it on 120 hertz. I'm then going to go down here, pop down to idle speed control, idle speed control, idle speed control, and we're going to uh, have it on open loop solenoid stepper for the moment. And then once it's set up, we can actually put it onto closed loop, and that way it will self adjust. Max a minute, five and 95. Fan will be fine, power steer, air con. So that can be added if necessary, so that you can add air con steps to it. So it allows you to give it a couple more, um, a little bit more idle speed. So if it's on open loop, It'll just give the duty cycle that it will use. I'm going to steal a duty cycle from another tune I did recently. That is cheating. I'm just going to go back to the configuration right at the moment. And turn it on to closed loop. So if I put it on closed loop, it will now give you, give me a target. And, it, and it's changed some of the settings in here so the throttle position lockout is once it goes over a certain amount it'll stop adjusting the idle speed and you want to get that quite low the rpm lockout we can go much more than that basically it will stop adjusting it once you get over the if the idle speed is so if the idle speed is much more than that target then it won't continue to go in closed loop. And once you get the functions pretty close, you can drop that number quite a lot. You'd also work on, when you're working on this, on the link, if you're in the configuration, it's got a help menu here, really helpful to use. So it's got a whole lot of information there. And it's got some more gains here of how fast and slow it will work. Hmm. So at this point, I am going to cheat and I am going to grab them from somewhere else. Because I want the auto speed to actually work. I'll come back to that now. The, the other one we'll have here is we'll actually have a target RPM. Just gonna dump the new target in. So with the target RPM, what the computer will try to do is it will adjust the duty cycle to the stepper, oh sorry, to the solenoid, to get it to that target. There's a bit of a setup process, and I will find a car 
and we'll go through that proper setup process another day and I'll show you how to actually get it pretty close to get your correct um, base solenoid numbers so it gets towards the target. Very briefly what you do is you, you're watching the, I have it on um, closed loop and I just watch as it self adjusts through each temperature zone and then I match it to what the ECU is generating. Really quick, real simple. Idle speed is important. I think idle speed is vital on an aftermarket ECU, even on a race car. It's nice to have a car that'll actually start and idle and warm up like it should. You don't have to sit there warming it up. That's just a pain. And it also helps with hot start because it opens that throttle a little bit. It bypasses the throttle, allows some airflow, so it starts better hot as well. I like cars at idle. That's why I run fuel injection. It's nice to have them so they start up and work like factory, even with the aftermarket ECU on all functions. So that's auto speed control. I hope that was helpful, and we'll talk to you again. Catch you later.